Okay, we're now recording. I want to welcome everybody to the Amherst Community Chat for January 14th. Today, we have special guests from the Community Safety Working Group, the Chair Paul Wiley and Vice Chair Brianna Owen, who have joined us. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So we're going to learn a little bit more about their work um, in just a moment. First, I'm going to ask if your town manager, Paul Bachelman, has any general updates to share. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Brianna. Um, so the the important thing for in terms of COVID-19 is that we are in the middle of um, a major vaccination program for first responders. Uh, Amherst has stepped up and volunteered to do pretty much the eastern half of Hampshire County, everything on this side of the Connecticut River. Northampton has stepped up to volunteer to do the other half of Hampshire County. Uh, the first two days we did a couple hundred, several hundred, maybe 300 um, vaccinations of first responders. Um, set up really nicely at the bank center C credit to emma dragon our new public health director for pulling us together and you know our fire chief uh, tim nelson was there and he, he claims he didn't cry but um but he was very proud to be one of the first ones to get his vaccination um and felt it was really important for him to be out there in front to show folks that uh, this is a good thing to do a very high percentage of our firefighters have already gone through so that's really good good news uh, and it felt like for all of us you know like this is the we're turning the corner we're starting to grab take back ground it's a long journey you know we got it took us a long time to get to this point so it's really it's really felt like a really good thing and hoping to expand that vaccination program farther and farther out to other people which we'll be talking about next week yeah, and I will mention, based off of what a Paul uh, Paul said, just to really clarify that this phase, this clinic this week is only for eligible first responders. We've had a lot of calls from different groups um, interested in trying to, to come down to the uh, vaccination clinic, and we will be widely sharing that information once other groups are eligible, uh, but right now it's just first responders. Okay, so um, to start off, I'd love Brianna Owen to uh, introduce herself and take it away. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be here today. My name is Brianna Owen. I have been a resident of Amherst for about the last 10 years. I graduated from Amherst High and I actually graduated from UMass Amherst too. Um, right now, the type of work I'm doing is working in child advocacy. I'm the director of a local program at a nonprofit to specifically aid um, young people in the foster care system aging out with little social support. Um, outside of that, I really look forward to doing this type of work and doing my part with police reform because the same way that there's intersections with race in the child welfare system, there is intersections with race in law enforcement and areas for improvement. Um, so yeah. I'm Brianna. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brianna. Um, and next, I'll ask the chair of the Community Safety Working Group, Paul Wiley, to introduce himself. Good afternoon. My name is Paul Wiley. I've um, <clears throat> been a resident of Amherst since 1982, uh, coming from New Haven, Connecticut. And uh, when I came here, I began working um, as a, a teacher at the middle school. And then I went through uh, the system, became a guidance counselor, and ultimately a principal for the last 18 years of my career as the principal at Crocker Farm Elementary School. Uh, since my retirement, I've been working with um, uh, different organizations to work with school leaders uh, in doing uh, leadership coaching, delivering training and workshops, and um, you know, participating as much as possible in community life. There was a point in time when I was on the ABC committee, one of the board members for three years and I was their vice chair. And uh, currently I'm happy to be serving on the uh, community safety working group. This is a, it's an opportunity for us to do something more for our community. And so uh, I was happy to be asked and certainly happen to be chosen. So I'm glad to be here. Okay, thank you, Paul. I'm gonna take this opportunity to remind those who are joining us live. Um, you, we encourage you to ask questions either by rising, raising your hand in Zoom or star nine from the phone. Um, alternatively, you can use the Q&A function that's built into Zoom and we will read your questions live. So feel free to do that throughout any point um, during our conversation today. 
So I think one of the natural first questions for those who aren't familiar with the Community Safety Working Group is to um, perhaps tell us a little bit about the group, uh, what its mission is and where you're at in that process. Um, so I'd invite um, both of you to, to speak to that. And if you wanna answer different elements of that, I'll, I'll start with, with you, Brianna. Um, okay, so the Community Safety Working Group right now is a board of eight people who all come from different walks, walks of life in the community. And I think one thing that's really important about this group is that we all bring different experiences, both professionally and personally. Um, our charge or purpose is to think about alternative safety methods for the community and also make recommendations for the current oversight of the Amherst Police Department. Great. And Paul, would you have, do you have anything to add to, to that description? Uh, not much, uh, with the exception of just to say that um, we've been meeting since uh, the first week in December, uh, with the exception of, I think, the last Wednesday, we, we did not meet for because people were on vacation, etc. But we've been meeting weekly, and the meetings have been generally well attended uh, by the public. And, um, you know, we're having an opportunity to have these discussions um, openly uh, with people listening in to what we're talking about. And we've received a, 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 some very strong feedback from, from folks. We're hoping to get more. Um, one of the, we, we have a, a number of things that we do um, in addition to what, what Brianna mentioned, but we're, we're, we're trying to uh, learn more from the previous work in a town uh, through previous studies and committees. We're e examining uh, current public safety services. Um, we're reviewing policies and current training practices, for example, the police department, exploring different models that might be applicable to, uh, to Amherst or at least get ideas from. And we're collecting data, both personal narratives and uh, you know, statistical data for, you know, from the community, which will inform our work. We are still very early in the process, even though we've been meeting each week. And we do have uh, questionnaires out. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. We, um, we have a website presence under the uh, uh, amherstmass.gov website. So there are places where people can, can interact with us in that way. And most recently, we're reaching out to, uh, with more specific questions and comments to the Amherst Police Department. And uh, we're waiting for them to uh, complete their work on the questions we've asked. So we're, we're deeply into it right now. And it kind of, it's exciting to, to know that we're gonna be moving forward in a positive way. Hey, thank you, Paul. And we, we do have a live question from the room um, from Sarah, and it kind of touches on some of the things you just said, but um, maybe there's more information you can share. Um, Sarah asks, how are you reaching out to the community for input and are you getting adequate feedback? Hmm. And that can go to either of you. We, we want to go, Brianna, we can switch back and forth. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so the two ways that we brainstormed to reach out to the community was through doing two community forums. We had one last night from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, I urge everyone in the audience to attend our Saturday one, which will be from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., where we're getting a chance to hear from people, people's experiences, and also hear the recommendations on um, alternative ways of safety. Outside of the two forums, we're also doing a survey. Um, I think it's great that we're doing a survey because um, it's really hard to go and talk about your experiences with the police. Um, it's a daunting system and to show your face. A lot of people are scared of retaliation. So I'm glad we were able to find a virtual way to connect with the community and hear their experiences so we can move forward in our work. And, and I, I think I cannot add much to that at all with the exception of, you know, we encourage individuals to come to our uh, regularly scheduled meetings when they're posted and announced. Um, a lot of information is, is shared during those meetings and uh, people will get a chance to, to hear firsthand what the discussion is all about. One of our priorities is certainly to reach out to the community. Um, 
hearing hearing the perspectives and the stories and the narratives from the community about their relationship with the police department is critical, you know, to our work. So again, I wanted to just want to circle back and say, you know, we have a, a, a very accessible website too. So if you can't make a meeting, uh, you can't attend a, a seminar, I mean, excuse me, a, a, a webinar or a Zoom meeting or a forum, then uh, you have access to us in that way too. And you can have input directly through the website. I would say too, given our discussion last night with the community, uh, it, it, it prompts me to say that we, we will be thinking about different ways to outreach to the community in light of what um, uh, Ms. Owen just said. Uh, it is difficult to, to, to come on and be very public sometimes with some very personal experiences and stories. So we'll be looking for some more creative ways to uh, build our information pool so that we respect people's uh, privacy or need to be private in any way. Yeah, like I add to that is that, you know, the, the working group brings everyone's personal experiences too. And I, one of the things I'm, I'm really impressed by the members of the working group is that everybody brought their own set of experiences growing up uh, like Brianna did or being in the educational system like you have, um, Paul, and, um, and, and living and working here. And I think that that has really created a lot of content to start with. But, and I thought last night's meeting, there was a lot of, um, you know, really um, informative and sort of moving testimony provided to the working group. And I think that, um, you know, the the need to continue to re out, do that outreach. And I think we, we, we were talking before we started about the challenges of Zoom world, right? Um, because we're all on screens. If you're, if you're able to gather in person, it would be easier. But I think the working group is like, taking on that challenge and figuring out how do we move forward on that so mm -hmm. and so i thought last night's meeting is a, a solid two hours you guys um and um and then as as uh, brianna said you know saturday again three o'clock saturday is another opportunity to participate live mm -hmm. and i'll just going to do another call to the the folks who are live i did see a hand fly up it went down um feel free to put your hand up and i can bring you into the room so you can make your comment or ask your question or you can use the q a function if you feel more comfortable and i'll read your comment and question um, one question that we do have here is um, what made each of you interested in participating in this work and why now um, what about the times has led you to to, to join to this group mm -hmm. Well, for, for me, um, I've had uh, lifelong experiences with the police departments in the different places I've lived. I had an opportunity to, I mean, I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut. And one story I share with folks often is my first relationship with a police officer was my uh, little league coach. And I did not know he was a police officer until one day I saw him away from the field, um, away from church, which we attended uh, on a regular basis. And I saw him in his police officer uniform and I was shocked. I said, you know, you're a little kid. I thought he was a baseball coach, <laughs> you know, but now he's this. As it turns out, uh, many of us young folks, at then I was 12, but continue to have a relationship with him and, and others. Um, at the same time, I think we knew even as young kids that there were problems in our community with um, enforcing the law and the police. Things certainly escalated over the years uh, as our political and social scene starts, started to change more, more rapidly and more deeply, you know, up to the current situation with uh, uh, George Floyd, for example. And I think when these things come to a head in the way that they do, it, it, it's a call in a way to try to do something to, to turn the corner on, on this kind of work. Not that people haven't been trying all along, uh, including Brianna, I know she works in, in the community and members of our, our group who uh, do wonderful work in the community. They're very active. Uh, this was just another opportunity. So that was, that's what drew me to it. And what also drew me to me, drew me to it was the fact that I, 
I knew many of the, and still know many of the Amherst Police Department members. Uh, I've known uh, Chief Livingstone for quite a while. I know several of his uh, office, his, his officers in terms of their, their, their rank and from the captains and lieutenants. And so uh, they too, I believe, you know, want to want to do something to make a change, and I think we have to help facilitate that because we're in a very difficult time, and and building trust is really the 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 bottom of this pyramid. Uh, we can't go any further than the amount of trust we have in our ability to work together. So um, that's my my reason for coming. I hope to be a trust facilitator, if you will, <laughs> well, with other people, and that's what drew me to it. Great, thank you, Paul. Brianna, do you have any um, any thoughts to share about what you, drew you to the, the work? Actually, this opportunity to be on the community safety working group was sent to me by one of the kids who's on my caseload. Um, I've always been very passionate about social justice. Um, during my undergrad at UMass Amherst, I did do some time working as an academic diversity fellow. So what that entailed was really um, delegating resources and making safe spaces to talk about racism. And one thing that's always stood out to me is um, often the people whose stories matter the most in reform don't get amplified because they don't have a seat at the table. I think I'm in a unique position being a foster alum and a white passing Latina to get a degree and be a director in the community and be so hands-on. And I feel like it's my place to advocate and help uplift those voices. I think we can all agree that after what happened at the Capitol, that law enforcement reform is necessary beyond like words can describe. And I just wanna be the change that I wanna see in my community. Great, thank you, Brianna. That's really interesting that you, you know, one of your um, cases brought this opportunity to you. I mean, it's really, um, I guess, rewarding for us to hear that on the government side, we, we try to do these outreach and, and, and recruit for these important roles. And it's interesting to see that that's how it came came down um, to you. So I have a and question. That, and, and that they saw you as a leader, Brianna, that you should yeah. be standing up for this. I, that's that's really a credit to you, I think. So we do have a, a question from the room um, asking if part of your work is assessing how much police department time and money is spent on things that can be dealt with by civilians, uh, for example, mental health response or traffic details. Let me just say, um, the list of questions and um, <clears throat> and comments we post to the Amherst Police Department includes uh, that theme. I think we're looking for ways to build not only more trust between the Amherst Police Department and the, the uh, community members in, in this town, but also what that interface looks like. We, uh, we realize that the community wants to have a voice in how what policing looks like, they, they want to understand how um, the police use their time and their energy and their their enforcement uh, power, if you will, to do the right things for for the community. We we've had some discussions about homelessness. We've had uh, discussions about uh, young people in particular who uh, are often, often in many cities and towns, not just in Amherst, but come in contact with the police and for, especially for young black men of color, this becomes an, becomes an issue. So we, we, are, we're, we are giving the, the Amherst Police Department an opportunity to respond to, to those questions. And um, as we go forward, and um, you know, this, is, this is coming up, we will be coming back to the community with a couple of reports, I want to say one uh, very soon, like an update about what's what's going on, and then in a summative uh, fashion, uh, uh, around June, we'll be uh, finishing up our work with recommendations. So I don't know if that actually is in it. We're kind of waiting to hear question uh, answers to our questions we pose relative to what you're asking, and the best people to go to is the Amherst Police Department themselves. Brianna, I don't know if. I left something out there or you want to add? No, no you, you covered it. <laughs> okay. And how, um, when are you expected to get those responses back and how will that inform your next steps? 
Well, we, we hope to, to get them back sooner than later. Let me just say, we, we put information out um, pretty much at the end of the month and we anticipated there might be some delays in, re in responses to our questions, which were quite lengthy and quite broad in terms of what they covered. Um, and there were you know, more than several categories. So we got a first response already from the Amherst Police Department. And then we came back with some uh, questions and comments relative to what they said. We felt we needed more information. We needed some more clarity, those kinds of things. So we're in that stage right now. The timing of that, I'm not sure at this point. Um, I'm sure we'll get an update, um, you know, from from Mr. Bockelman and uh, the Amherst Police Department uh, very shortly. But um, like I said, this week we didn't have a regular meeting. We're doing our our, our forums, but that's a high priority for us right now in terms of our work. Thank you. And there's there's a question. This is directed towards our town manager. Do you expect recommendations to be incorporated or addressed in the FY22 budget? Yeah, I I do. And I hope that it will. And I think that the timing that the council's vote was to uh, ask for a report of an of sort of a preliminary report at by the end of this month, which we will provide. Um, and that that timing was set up specifically to accommodate the budget schedule that we're in. I don't need to present the budget till May first, so there's time for us to accommodate what the recommendations of the working group are going to be. Um, and we already have that sort of um, notched on the side as like this is something we will want to address in the FY22 budget. Um, you know, the police department is working diligently on the follow-up questions. The, the, the uh, working group had a, a long series of follow-up questions and clarifications and requesting additional information. You know, I think um, they anticipate getting that to you ASAP, um, Mr. Wiley, um, probably Monday's a holiday, probably next week sometime. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I, I basically I, we're, look, we're looking at the, your meeting on the 27th is try to get it before that meeting so you have time to review it and some more time to digest and whatever you want to do with it at that point. Um, so yes, to the question, it, the intention is to um, address this some in some way um, und, indeterminate at this point in the FY22 budget. Great, that's a that's an excellent question. Um, so thank you for addressing that. So I just wanna give one more chance to the, the folks in the room. We're, we're coming up to our last five minutes. So now's your chance to pop your questions into Q&A or raise your hands. Uh, while I wait for that, I will ask Brianna Owen if she can share some calls to action. There's a lot of things going on with the community safety working group. So what do you ask the community um, to be tuned into and to do right now? I definitely call you guys all to action to participate in our next forum that we're having Saturday, January 16th from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. I also urge you guys all to take a look at the packets that's on the Amherst website. If you're interested in learning more about the information that we're sharing with each other and also our responses from the Amherst Police Department, um, community trust starts with community transparency and our group is being 100% transparent. If you guys are interested, we'd love to have you sit in on our meetings and welcome to, we're always welcome to publicly comment great and in your meetings are they every wednesday or is there a certain schedule that people can be aware of your regular I meetings i believe they're usually wednesdays from 5 30 to 7 30 they occasionally do change um, that information mm -hmm. should be on the amherst website though and you can also see that on our public meetings calendar. Um, any given meeting will be posted there with the joining instructions. Um, but, but, but this group has been meeting weekly, except for one week at Christmas and between Christmas and New Year's, but they've been very disciplined about meeting every week. So I do see a hand in the room. Um, I'm gonna recognize Judith and please unmute and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Judy Glazer. Now I've been I've been watching all your meetings uh, as part of the action group at the JCA, and I, I've lived in town since 1971 and raised three children here. And um, I I find myself wondering about dispatch, whether the person who answers the phone who is that person part of the police force? How is that person um, trained? to, to um, 
you know, triage the calls. Um, I, I haven't heard that coming up and it's been something that, that is a concern to me. So I can take, so that's a really good question. And I think it's something the working group will want to dig into. Uh, dispatched is located in the Amherst Police Department. They are, they do report to the Amherst Police Chief. So there is continuity there. And so the chief and his staff and there, we have a person in charge of the dispatch and they can come in to the working group. I think that's something the working group would want to consider, I'm sure, um, to understand all that. I don't know all the answers to those questions that you, you uh, posed, Ms. Glazer, but very important because that's the first point of contact for a lot of people. Thank you. If I may, just to add to what Mr. Bachelman said, uh, uh, Ms. Glazer, that um, I believe that is one of the questions in that we ask the in some form to the police department. I didn't see it because it's um, you know at, at the point of contact, the community with the Amherst Police Department, people do want to know uh, what happens at that that point of contact. You know what decisions are made by dispatch, who goes, how they go, those kinds of re what resources are sent out. So we're trying to be more informed. Uh, by the answers provided to us by the Amherst Police Department. And, um, you know, that begins our conversation with them um, and our community. So I believe that's in there in some fashion, if, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I think I remember reading something close to that. Thank you, Ms. Glazer. Do you have any follow-up questions to that? No, thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you for your question. All right, so we're coming up on our uh, last two minutes here. I do not see any other hands in the room or questions in the Q&A. So I'd love to give you all a chance um, if there's something that you didn't get asked that you wanna share, um, now is the chance to do that. So why don't we start with um, Paul Wiley? Anything you wanna leave the um, community with? Um. Just to, to reinforce, I think what Ms. Owen said, I think all of us are on the same page that we, we want to bring focus, uh, community focus, uh, in a way that's useful on the topics of policing in Amherst. Uh, we, we have received resource suggestions from people uh, on our website and through other communications with the town manager's office. We are doing research ourselves to find out what might be the best ways to think about and respond to the need for uh, new ways of policing or more effective ways of policing within this current social context. So I would, I would just encourage folks to, to stay with us on this and you know, stay in communication and dialogue with us on this. Um, I, it, it's gonna help us in the long run. And it's, this is not, uh, Kind of a one and done meeting thing. I, I see this as a long term, even beyond the work of the committee, the working group, a long term commitment by the town to continue to improve, uh, you know, monitor, monitor and support good policing. And I, I think we can get there. We all have to, to stay with it and just hang in and be, be courageous about our conversations, if you will. So that and, you know, Thank you, you know, for, for coming on to people who came on today and thank you to all the people who have been attending the meetings, some of you pretty regularly, I imagine. And uh, we're looking forward to the work going forward. Great, thank you, Paul. And Brianna, any, any last words? I just can encourage you guys to continue to um, attend our meetings and also help lead our work. As Mr. Wiley had already said before, um, we do our best when you help us, when you pass resources along, when you attend and um, inform us. So I really encourage people to attend the Saturday forum from three to five. And, and the links for that meeting um, are on our calendar, but they're also on the homepage under the news section. So if you just get to our amersma.gov and uh, scroll down to the news and announcements, you'll be able to get into that um, meeting via phone or via Zoom directly. Um, all right, Paul, uh, Mr. Bachelman, I got a different, <laughs> two Pauls, two Briannas, it's, it gets confusing. confusing. Um, 
so Paul B, any anything you want to leave our community with? After yeah, that? I think just to um, it's support what Brianna was, uh, Owen was saying was that the flyer she designed, and so it's it's really attractive flyer. So it's it's out there, and I'm sure that the working group will be brainstorming other ways to reach out to the to public and more targeted outreach. Um, so I think this is a really important time. Uh, the town is committed to it. Uh, the chief is committed to this, and we have a very the working group is just a spectacular group of people. It's it's really it's really encouraging and exciting to me to work with with this wonderful group. Great, thank you. And I want to especially thank our special guests, Paul Wiley and Brianna Owen. This is going to be recorded and posted to our playlist in case you want to share it with friends and neighbors. It'll be up there uh, a little bit later today. And we will be back next week on Thursday with special guests, um, Health Director Emma Dragon and Director of Senior Services, Mary Beth Ogilowitz to discuss vaccines um, and the different groups and eligibilities um, that relate to the vaccine rollout. All right, thank you all for joining us. Thank you both. Thanks, Brianna. Thank you.